Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and today we're going to talk about the Trusted Internet Connection, or TIC 3.0. So TIC 3.0 uh, is, a, is a federal cybersecurity initiative that's intended to enhance network and perimeter security across the entire federal government. Uh, this was uh, published back in 2019. There's several guidance documents that outline the goals of this program. There's things like guidebooks and reference architectures and use cases. Uh, so a lot of different documentation around this. But one of the primary goals of TIC 3.0 is a move toward modernization. Uh, they want to include broader cloud adoption uh, to accommodate remote workers uh, that use multiple devices, just a more modern way of doing things. So I wanted to give you a quick picture of how things were prior to TIC 3.0 and then show you the maybe the difference of what TIC 3.0 is doing. So uh, previously, you would have a federal agency uh, maybe headquarters building here, and at the headquarters building you'd have like a data center, and at this data center there would be a trusted internet connection, and so I'm going to put a little lock right here to show that this is like a, you know, secure, secure connection here, and you would have users all over uh, the country, or frankly all over the world really, and let's say that a user in one location needed to access, you know, some cloud-based uh, service, you know, here, and um, and so rather than the user routing directly to that cloud provider, then, um, then the user would have to go through the headquarters uh, agency, you know, the agency headquarters data center through the trusted internet connection and then be routed back here to this, uh, you know, cloud provider. So what this did is it added a lot of transport cost, a lot of latency, it, the user experience was not that good just because it took so long. The motivation behind this was, was good in the sense that um, the idea is that, hey, if we can secure this trusted internet connection here and put all the security features and, and protocols and all that here, then we'll know that regardless of what you know, user comes in or where the user is, the user comes through a known trusted location or trusted connection to then go out to whatever resource they need. And so, anyways, so that's the way that it was done. But with uh, TIC 3.0, Again, there's a move from this consolidated architecture to a more distributed architecture. So I'll just put a little line here and uh, show you kind of a, a representation of TIC 3.0. So let's say you still have that same agency headquarters. So here's the agency headquarters building, um, you know, with the data center and all that. Uh, but then also, but then maybe you have like a branch location out here, and maybe you have you know some kind of cloud service, maybe a couple of these cloud services, that kind of thing, right? Um, I'm still going to put actually a tick right here with the lock on it. Um, but what happens now is that rather than having a single consolidated place to do all of your security, uh, the distributed nature of this includes or introduces these things called policy uh, enforcement points. Um, and so I'm going to put those all around here at each of these locations, PEP. And essentially what's happening is now you're moving the security capabilities from one centralized place now closer to uh, the applications, closer to the data, which is a good idea, frankly, in security anyway. Um, and so there are several security capabilities that are defined. And within each you know, distributed location at these policy enforcement points, you can define which security capabilities need to be in place at that location. So... If you have, let's say, a list of, you know, 100 different security capabilities defined, which the, the literature in TIC 3.0 does define all the different security capabilities, you don't have to put every single one of them at every single location. You can, you can make it more granular, more specific, um, which gives you better security, uh, just a better experience. Um, and so also there's, I'm going I'm to put kind of a circle around this, say, branch location, there's an idea of trust zones, so I'm going to put trust right here, uh, a trust zone in TIC 3.0 in that you can identify what's called or, or what's represented as either a high or medium or low trust zone, and these are established based on the nature of the data there or the users uh, in that zone so that users within that zone can share data uh, based on the level of the trust zone that they are in. Um, and to be clear, these trust zones are elastic, they're dynamic, they can be networked, um, they can be used within containers or within an app or a user-specific trust zone. Um, and so these trust zones are defined and established in TIC 3.0, 
Uh, but also I wanted to make the point that TIC 3.0 is more aligned architecturally and just security capability wise to a zero trust framework than any of the previous TIC models were. Uh, and in fact, frankly, the future will likely incorporate zero trust models for at least some use cases in TIC 3.0 and beyond, um, which zero trust, you know, by nature um, means that you don't trust, you know, things. You don't trust the endpoints, the users themselves. You don't trust the infrastructure that you're on or the applications or the identity service. Um, and so the, tr the zero trust model, the security model for zero trust is, a, is really a cornerstone uh, for the authentication portion of TIC 3.0. So when you talk about user authentication, uh, you know, they have, the mindset is toward a zero trust model. Um, F5, by the way, has a host of technologies that can allow for a zero trust uh, model to be implemented. Um, so anyway, so that's the, that's the nature of the distributed architecture of TIC 3.0, which by the way, I was going to mention this, there's the TIC here in the middle. There are certain uh, security capabilities that are going to be implemented um, or used as it were, regardless of where you are located. So these are the more general security capabilities that will apply across the board no matter what. So you can still have those defined while you have the more specific security capabilities defined you know, at each of the uh, distributed locations. All right, so the TIC 3.0 framework itself is based on the, uh, the NIST or the National Institute of T Standards and Technology cybersecurity framework, and there's five critically important core functions within the NIST cybersecurity framework. And I'll just write those here quickly. Um, the first is identify, so I'll put identify, and the idea here is that you need to have a full understanding of your systems, your people, your assets, your data, all of that. You need to know what you have so that you can manage it, so that you can protect it, uh, which that's the next one is protect. And so once you know what you have, you need to protect what you have, right? The next one after that is detect. So if there's any kind of significant event, uh, then you need to be able to detect that. And then after you detect, you need to be able to respond uh, so respond to any kind of significant event that happens. And then finally, you need to recover. So you need to be able to have a plan in place to restore systems back to their known good state, right? Um, so these are the, these are the, uh, the five core functions that are, that are uh, mapped directly to the NIST cybersecurity framework. Um, and so these mappings of these five critical you know, core functions uh, are within the TIC 3.0 documentation uh, are then grouped into two kind of major categories, if you will. The first is what I'll call universal, so I'll put universal over here, and then the other one is this policy enforcement point, so PEP -E here, right? Um, from a universal perspective, there are going to be uh, security capabilities that apply to every user regardless of where they are, kind of like uh, what I talked about over here just a second ago, but then on the policy enforcement point um, locations, that then each of these critical uh, capabilities are going to be mapped to a more granular, a more specific security capability, right? So um, F5 has done a great job. We have a, a matrix, a, a mapping document, if you will, that maps based on the NIST cybersecurity framework um, that actually maps F5 technologies against each of the universal and policy enforcement point um, security capabilities. And so there's things like, I won't go through every single one right here because the list is really long, but there are things like our access policy manager or our big IQ system or the LTM or the advanced WAF, uh, things like that that are going to handle, uh, say, the universal security capabilities against each of these core um, you know, security functions here. Um, and then maybe over on the policy enforcement point side, the, the one that's closer to the data um, you can look at things like our automation tool chain, our open APIs, our you know, DNS services, uh, things like Nginx Plus or SSL Orchestrator or our shape technology you know, for uh, bot protection, things like that uh, you can map over here. And so F5 uh, has done a great job of saying, hey, not only do you need to understand this from a, you know, a conceptual perspective on how do, you, how do you generally approach this TIC 3.0 guidance, but at some point, you have to put technology against it in order to, you know, uh, in order to achieve what you're, you know, what what this is getting after. So, a couple of the things that I was just going to mention is 
when you implement security standards in general, there's a few core elements to keep in mind. And the first is you need to have an application-centric view of security uh, as opposed to, say, an infrastructure focus. So look at the app uh, itself from a, you know, an app-centric view. Uh, the next one is platform independence as a multi-cloud proposition. So look at platform independence. Uh, the second, or the next one, I'm sorry, is open source at the core. Uh, so as you, as you develop these things, look at open source, uh, you know, uh, options. Um, the, the next one is integrated security. So rather than trying to add security after the fact, you need to integrate security into, uh, into your models, into your, you know, approach. Um, and then the next one is uh, built-in analytics, and frankly, not just built-in analytics, but also artificial intelligence enabled, so AI-enabled built-in analytics. Uh, and then the last one I would mention is an API-first approach or mindset for modern application development. So look at APIs and, and the way that you can use those. Um, the good news is, is that F5 is very well positioned to achieve all of these things. So, uh, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video on TIC 3.0. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you guys out there in the community.